Today we're going to talk about five neighborhoods that I think are highly underrated in Norfolk. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan Inman. If you are new here, we talk the live, work, play, all the fun, the good, the bad, the ugly of the coastal Virginia area or the 757 or the Hampton Roads, whatever you want to call it. We call it coastal Virginia because we think that makes most sense for most people that are coming from out of the area and don't know what the heck Hampton Roads means. And as Sean just reminded me, because I always forget these things, is I am an active realtor in the area. My wife is a loan officer and we help families just like yours move in and out of the area as smooth and easy as possible. Whether that is buying from out of town sight unseen and needing to do, you know, recording videos or if you come into town and you just want help finding that new place that's what we do day in day out so as much as we love making this content we love more to serve your real estate needs and we all the information down below is our contact information our team is built around serving yours and we'd love to hear from you so if you do me a huge favor at the end of this video if i've earned it hit that little like button. Let the algorithm know that you like the content, puts more of it in front of you. And if you would like to see more content without the algorithm, you can hit the subscribe button with the little bell notification and you'll be notified every Monday and Friday when new content drops. But we're gonna talk today a little bit about five neighborhoods that I think might just be passed over or underrated here in Norfolk. You may have noticed that I'm wearing a uh, floral shirt today. I picked up some tropical shirts. I am gonna be hitting 40 here soon, I'm 37. And so I thought I'd just go ahead and embrace the daddom and also that we live in the coastal Virginia area. So I got my nice board shorts on, the floral shirt and some flip flops. I hope it works well on camera because um, it's hot outside and these things breathe really well. So neighborhood number one, this neighborhood is called Roland Park. If on the map you're zooming into Norfolk, it's gonna be right there smack dab in the middle. Um, it's off of Tidewater Drive. You drive right by it without actually knowing it's there. Grace Bible Church recently um, Bought a building is now using that as one of their campuses. Uh, but what's beautiful about this neighborhood is there is a decent amount of pro properties that are right there on the water. Um, the neighborhood was built out in the 40s and 50s. And so you get a lot of Cape Cods and little ranch homes in here that are fall right into that first time home buyer category for our area. Uh, most of them have either been taken care of extre extremely well, but what's really, I think, special about Roland Park is you can get in there on the water for somewhere between two and $400,000, which is an exceptional number. Uh, considering that being out there on Ocean View on the waterfront or in Virginia Beach, you're looking more like seven, eight hundred or million dollar plus homes. If you zoom in on that truly a crime map, you'll see that it is light blue, which means that there is very, very little low reported crime in this area, which makes it a very quiet neighborhood. Uh, one of the other little nice things about Roland Park is they have a little neighborhood uh, well, they have a little neighborhood park in there uh, that is paid for by the city. There's no homeowners association that has to pay for that. It's paid for by a public park and um, you can go in there and you can walk right down the street. I have several friends that have lived in this neighborhood. They absolutely adore it. Um, and um, there's quite a few other little rentals in there, but it is an extremely wonderfully uh, community oriented neighborhood, very quiet, old growth trees, plenty of um, you know sidewalks to go walking throughout the neighborhood, very tight knit community. So what does it look like to get into this neighborhood? I mean, majority of the homes are gonna be three to four bedrooms, one, two baths. You're probably gonna be sitting right around 1300 square feet, some below that, some above that. Uh, there have been obviously some homes that have been torn down and they built some spec build houses in there that are much larger, uh, but the average for the neighborhood is gonna be right around 225,000.
again to get onto the water you're probably going to be some starting in the 250 range for the most part uh, but the average should be right around the 300 to 350 thousand dollar range again there are homes above and below this uh, but that should give you an idea of what it takes to get into that neighborhood and more specifically on the water One little notable mention about Roland Park, it is right around the corner from one of my favorite bakeries in the area, Nas Bakery, and they have the world's best apple fritter, um, courtesy of Dan's rating system. So five out of five for the apple fritter by Dan. Uh, little insider tip here is we would actually buy these because they run out of them really quickly. We buy a couple of them so that the next day, because they're closed on Sundays, and you slice them up and do like a little egg batter, you can actually make the French toast out of them, and it is exceptionally good. Rolling on to neighborhood number two is going to be Riverview along Granby. Uh, again, kind of centrally no located in Norfolk uh, next to the neighborhood called Colonial Place. Um, this is going to be to the east of Granby Street. Uh, there's some shopping along there. You've got Me Hogar, you have uh, the Cracker's Bistro Bar, you have Clementine's at Riverview. These are all fantastic restaurants within walking distance if you live in this beach. Uh, again, another th nice thing I like about Riverview, and again, just part of being part of the coastal Virginia area, is part of this neighborhood borders the Elizabeth River. So you have a lot of homes that sit there right on the river, and one of the beauties of this neighborhood, maybe um, over some others, is they have a lot of old architecture. So bungalows and colonials, these big sprawling uh, southern front porches, uh, which puts you out there and puts you in the community so you can see your neighbors walking by. Um, and then what I find is that in this neighborhood uh, is that you'll have stuff along the water actually is a little bit higher priced. So you're gonna be starting probably around the 350 uh, to 450 range, then can go up into the 800s and maybe even the million dollar range if it's something that's been exceptionally well cared for or expanded upon. Just south of this is going to be the Norfolk Public Zoo in Lafayette Park. The zoo is wonderful. People come from all around Hampton Roads or the coastal Virginia area to visit it. Uh, and then you have Lafayette Park there, which has plenty of picnic tables and able you know, areas for you to grill. They even have, um, what's the that adventure race course they have right down the center? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's like a track and field type. It's super cool. I've, I've seen people over before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have like this obstacle course that you can time and race with, with folks. Uh, they have a disc golf course there. There's something that we play on a regular occasion uh, because it's so close. It's only in nine baskets or nine holes. Um, oh, Sean, did you see uh, the James Conrad throw for the, the World Finals? I have to check that out. Maybe you can insert it. He, at the last one, on the hole 18, it's the very final. He's one stroke behind. Um, what's his name, uh, Paul Macbeth, and threw it for uh, the second throw to, into the basket at 250 something feet to tie it up okay. to do a throw off at the end and ended up winning it. Okay. It's pretty wild. Anyway, so disc golf, that's what we're into. The majority of these homes in this review area are going to be around 2,000 square feet, so slightly larger, three to four bedrooms, sometimes five, two to three bathrooms, sometimes four. Uh, again, the average for the neighborhood is gonna probably be right around the $300,000 range. Like I mentioned before, almost all of these homes, I would say 90% of them have been built before 1950. So you get a little of that old world architecture if that's something that you want. If you're looking for a home with a lot of character, uh, these homes have generally have been taken care of pretty well. And so you get to reap the benefits of that old world architecture in that neighborhood. Lastly, I'll mention at the Clementines at Riverview, that restaurant, if you're going to go there for the very first time, you're gonna to wanna to get the King's French Toast. I'm not gonna explain any more, but just trust me, it is exceptional. Neighborhood number three, Ingleside in Norfolk, which is on the south side of Norfolk, right along the Elizabeth River. Uh, again, we have had friends that live in and out of this neighborhood. Um, one of the really cool parts of this neighborhood is, again, it's along the Elizabeth River, but it is 10 minute drive to downtown. And maybe, I think I Google mapped it earlier, it's seven minutes, seven to eight minutes to Costco. So 
Ingleside is a neighborhood mostly made up of ranches. Um, there are some Cape Cods in here and uh, some spec builds and teardowns that have happened, but the majority of the neighborhood is built in the, you know, the 30s, 40s, and 50s uh, and ranches uh, throughout the neighborhood. This is another neighborhood where you have a great opportunity to get in there on the water. Um, there are waterfront homes. Now, they do not sell very often. I was checking the last few, um, like 10 years of sales, that homes just very rarely sell on the water here. People go in there and stay for a very long period of time. But the average for the last three years was right around the $300,000 range. There have been a few that have sold in the six and seven and 800,000, but these are exceptions to the rule. And again, if you want to get on the water in a very, um, according to the Truly Cry Map, safe neighborhood, uh, this would be a great area to check out. So these ranches that you talk about, Dan, how big are they? Well, the majority of them are gonna be right around 1,600 square feet. Again, slightly below and slightly above is pretty normal for the area. Three to four bedrooms, one to two baths, um, occasionally three if someone's gone through and remodeled and converted a, a garage. Um, but that's gonna be the average for the neighborhood. What it looks like for cost-wise is probably gonna be right around the 225 to 250 range. Um, again, above and below this, depending on how much, um, you know, how many updates have been done and how well it's been cared for, but that's what you can expect for Ingleside. Neighborhood number four is gonna be Pinewell and Pinewell by the Bay. Uh, this is the same neighborhood, but broken into two different sections. Uh, this is at the very north end of Granby Street, where it runs into Ocean View. The Pinewell by the Bay, so on the north side of Ocean View Avenue there, is gonna be built out in the late 90s and early 2000s. Everything south of Ocean View, Pinewell, was actually an older neighborhood that was built in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So you're gonna get a lot of like little cottages, two doors, uh, colonials, bungalows, and that type of thing in that neighborhood. So if you want architecture, pay a little bit less, not as close to the water, but still walkable. This is a very, very quiet little neighborhood nestled up right against the Ocean View golf course. So very quiet there. And then right up against uh, Ocean View and um, the bay. So not a lot of cross traffic, old world architecture, super walkable. Barrier to entry in the neighborhoods right around 300,000. Can go all the way up to four or five, depending on if the house has been exceptionally well taken care of and or has updates. Um, if you won't, don't want to cross that Ocean View uh, Avenue and you wanna be in a newer home built in the 90s and 2000s and you can literally walk out in your one row off or on the waterfront, uh, Pinewell by the Bay is a great little neighborhood. Now there's only about 80 homes in there, so they only sell like two or three or four per year, but a really cool little neighborhood. There's three entrances paid by that are public access, um, but most people don't know that they are there. So the city actually takes care of them. There's no homeowners association to pay for and take care of those items. Uh, the average on the newer updated homes is gonna be right around the 2,200 to 2,400 square feet. Uh, four to five bedrooms and about three, three and a half bathrooms on almost all of those. Uh, and you're gonna have a very beach feel, right? So it's the, it, the houses are lifted up on stilts. The very bottom floor is gonna be garages and storage. And then the living areas are gonna be on the second and third floor. Uh, Again, if, if you're wanting something that is the barrier to entry, there's a, or the average for the Pinewell by the, by the bay is around 500,000. Um, again, up from there if you want to be actually on the water. But uh, in comparison to maybe something in the North End or Croatan, um, you're going to be two, three, four hundred thousand dollars less for this area. The neighborhoods in Pinewell that are slightly south are gonna be obviously a little bit smaller. The, I think the average for the entire neighborhood is right around 1,800 square feet, uh, two, three, four bedrooms, two, three baths. Um, again, the older architecture. So with older architecture, you do have to realize that there typically aren't as large of master suites, right? As time went by, most people valued newer floor plans, which meant bigger closets, bigger master bathrooms and suites and that type of thing. But if you really love that old world 
old world architecture. Um, the Pine Well, the one south of Ocean View, may be the neighborhood that you need to focus on there. Number five, neighborhood number five, we're gonna talk about North Camellia Acres and Camellia Gardens. Um, this is two neighborhoods, but really kind of developed around exactly the same time frame. Um, for Norfolk zoning purposes, they are separate, but for the sake of this video, we're going to put them together. One of the reasons I think this neighborhood is super cool and unique and maybe underrated, uh, and the reason I love it, is that it is nestled between Little Creek Road and the actual Little Creek. Um, you have, again, a whole bunch of houses there right along the water that have access to be able, that's deep enough to put a boat in. Um, you are not in a flood zone in the majority of this neighborhood. The barrier to entry to get on the water is right around 300,000 and goes up to like four or 500,000. But the normal, you know, average is like right three, 350. So to be able to uh, be in a spot where you can go to a really close local marina, be on the water, um, have access to a dirty buffalo within three minutes because it's right there at the very end of uh, Little Creek um, and then be able to uh, bike or ride and potentially walk uh, to the uh, the bay there or the ocean view beach front um, this is just a super cool neighborhood like i've mentioned about the other neighborhoods uh you know this was developed in the kind of the 50s 60s um, almost all of the neighborhood are brick you know single story ranches uh, so if you're looking for a place to retire where you don't have to walk stairs, might, this might be a good option. Um, the barrier to entry in the neighborhoods right around that $200,000, $225,000 range. You're looking at probably an average of 1,600, 1,700, 1,800 square feet. Three, to, you know, three bedrooms, two baths is very, very normal in this neighborhood. Some people have converted garages or added a second story, but the average is you know, 1,600 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths. Again, if you zoom in on the truly a crime map there, what you're gonna see is light blue. There's just very, very low uh, reported crime in this area. And so if you're looking for a neighborhood that is single story, um, that you can retire in, maybe even live on the water for uh, a reasonable amount in comparison to some of the other price points in the area, this could be a great option for you. Hey, again, my name is Dan Inman. As much as I love making this content, I'd love more to help your family move in and out of the area. I'm the real estate agent. My wife is the loan officer. We'd love to serve you and your family. And we hear from people all the time that are reaching out to us because they see the content and they think we can help them. And if I've earned it, you can hit the like button there. Uh, it'll let the algorithm know that we put out good content. And if you would hit subscribe, you'll be notified when new content drops on Mondays and Fridays.